It is my pleasure to introduce Todd Sabell, who will lead us through PPI's thinking about modern construction and will frame pretty much the entire day for us. A couple of quick comments and introduction about Todd. Todd is the founder and president of Strategic Project Solutions, SPS, as well as the Project Production Institute. Prior to founding SPS, Todd founded Pacific Contracting, established in 1993. Pacific Contracting was recognized in the mid 90s for its use of various innovations, including new infrastructure and virtual design and construction. In July 1998, these efforts were acknowledged in the UK government's Rethinking Construction Report. On the past two decades, Todd has authored a number of papers on the topic of optimizing engineering, fabrication, and construction. These papers have been published in multiple technical journals, presented at numerous of conferences around the world, and cited by several other authors. So without further ado, over to you, Todd. Okay, thanks, Roberto. Welcome, everybody. This is uh, very exciting. I think the, the membership growing in PPI and in the involvement and, and the global movement is really starting to pay some dividends for those that are, are, are involved in what's going on here. Uh, I'm going to take a few minutes to uh, talk a little bit about what modern construction is, including our vision and what needs to be done to, to make it happen. All right. And for me personally, I keep going back to this question that the Construction Users Roundtable asked back in 2019 in the Voice magazine, and that was, when is construction going to adopt uh, modern production? And I find these photographs most interesting, number one, because if you understand production, what is happening in this car factory on the left is actually fairly modern production and if, when compared to construction, if you will. This is a line flow production system. It has physical controls built in. We don't see a lot of unnecessary work and process laying around and everybody seems to be doing their job in a fairly safe environment. And that was all the way back in, in the 1930s. So the, the question of modern production from a construction perspective is quite interesting. But I would like to start with a roadmap on what we see people doing out there now. Okay, so there are companies looking to adopt industrialized construction, digitalization, and different and more modern ways of approaching their projects. But we see, and I'm not gonna to go too far on this, I'm gonna let James talk about this later with the, with the uh, panel that he's put together. But what we see out there is pretty much a typical journey. And we see that because at some point we get a call after people have attempted to do different things and there's some confusion. But what, what the journey most often looks like, and it's, it's pretty, pretty standard is, Someone decides that they're going to move from conventional design build and then get involved in either digitalizing or automating what they're currently doing or moving work off site or a combination of. And then somewhere down the road, they decide down the road, they decide they're going to standardize and productize and they begin to start looking at things like design for manufacturing assembly or DFX, depending on how you want to call it, uh, 3D modeling, obviously, and automated takeoff and pipe routing and so on and so forth is done at the automation and, and they kind of get in that area and they get a little bit stuck. All right. And, and, and James is going to talk about later in more detail, but I'm going to talk about why they get stuck and, and what necessarily happens. And at some point they begin to see that there's, there's more to the story. All right. Now, just a word on this whole idea of digitalization automation I think that uh, Peter Drucker provided a most interesting quote, and that is, there's nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. So there's a fair amount of stuff going on out there in the way of automating and digitizing things that perhaps we shouldn't even, digitalizing things we shouldn't even be doing, all right? And so first of all, we probably need to step back and, and look at this thing from a little bit different perspective. At the same time, when it comes to this idea of industrialization, there's all sorts of scenarios happening from using robotics on site, doing the same work, but doing it off site because we're in a factory environment or going with a fully automated type production system where in this particular instance, you can see someone says they could do 320 linear feet of adhesive application per minute. Um, is that even necessary, right? So lots going on, but what we believe is that there is lack of a framework for how you'd go approach this. All right, so if you get one thing out of what I'm presenting right now for the rest of the day, 
is we're going to set forward using a construction type graphic, if you will, a framework for what we believe to be modern construction. All right. And so clearly there's automation, clearly there's industrialization and digitalization, but we submit to you that the underlying foundation and everybody involved in this call for the most part is involved in some form of engineering construction. We all know the importance of the foundation. The foundation from our perspective is operation science. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that and, and how it plays into this. All right, so again, autonomous vehicles are coming. Automated production is coming, right? Or industrialized production, if you will, and digital is coming. There's no doubt about that. And we as the construction industry, other than build the facilities and the capabilities for people to leverage these innovations, really aren't that involved in it. Okay, these things are going to happen regardless of whether we uh, decide to embrace them or not. So the question for us, and we'll talk about this later, the final panel is, if autonomous is available and industrialized production techniques and digital, what are we going to do with it? And to me, and I see three people, uh, let's take an autonomous vehicle. There's the person that I'll say, I'm never going to let an autonomous vehicle arrive on my site to make a delivery. There's another one that'll say, ah, I'm indifferent to it. That was cool. And then there'll be the third one that says, wow, that is really a unique opportunity to track through the digital uh, transceiving of that vehicle to know when my delivery is going to come, whether that's a plane a uh, surface ship or even a um, vehicle okay so this stuff's coming i think the question for everybody is how are we going to go use it all right and again later in the day we're going to talk about that but we're also going to talk about this idea of industrialized construction right okay so what is operation science and why should you care all right again we'll submit to you that the administrative foundation of construction management when i'm talking construction management I'm talking about the defined term that's taught in universities, it's been written in numerous books. This idea of construction management is not well suited for this journey, not well suited, excuse me, for this journey. If your goal is to optimize how you deliver construction projects, especially if you're getting involved in the design and making of things, this is not of much value to you. And what we're beginning to see as practitioners of this have pushed way beyond and are beginning to understand that yes, I need to have the administrative functions associated with construction management or project management, but that's not of much value for what it is I'm trying to do. So what do we mean by this? Okay, and I'm gonna go through what we call the PPI framework for thinking about production on projects and its underlying uh, concept of operation science. So we're all very, used to the idea of creating a schedule to forecast and predict and measure progress as to what is happening or could happen on a project, all right? And so we like to call that the should or what we want to have happen, all right? An extreme amount of effort goes into creating these schedules and updating these schedules. And we might want to call this the demand. Here's what we want to have happen or what should have happened so that we could get this result that we're looking for as the project management institute calls it, right? The, the purpose of a project is to create a product service or a result, right? At the end of the day, the supply end of this or the production system is going to dictate what will happen. And so the first thing we wanna do is get our head around the concept that this network of doing for lack of a better word, whether it's knowledge work and engineering and design, architecture, whatever the case may be, even the administrative work and the craft work and the logistical aspects are the production systems. For the most part, the elements of those production systems are already in place. Precasters are precast, steel fabricators are fabricating, pipe fabricators are fabricating, engineering companies are engineering. The work is going on and really all a project is, is a accumulation or configuration of a bunch of capacity that's out there in the market to go deliver a specific project. So the first thing that we wanna do as the day goes on is be thinking about the difference between construction management and its uh, development of a schedule that creates a demand for what we're gonna call production management 
which is the ability to do all the stuff that needs to be done to deliver to that demand. And the big idea here is the production rates within the production system will drive the milestone dates. Okay, now most people understand that. A lot of them don't wanna admit that because it questions everything that we know. Okay, and so the framework that we're proposing to further simplify this as the years go on is a four, five, three. Four verbs, five levers, three curves, okay? And again, we submit to you that the first thing we need to do once we understand and acknowledge there's a production system is to focus on the actual doing, how things are designed, how things are made, how things are transported and how things are constructed or built on site, all right? By design, we mean requirements, definition, concept design, detailed engineering, schematic design, whatever you want to call it, general arrangements. Making is anything that is related to processing, manufacturing, fabricating, assembly, so on and so forth. And then obviously we take things to a location or a locale, so transport's important, okay? Those four verbs and the configuration of the production system is always based on what we call five levers, how you design the product. And the product could be a pipe spool, it could be a beam, it could be a column, it could be a precast element, or it could be an entire facility or a campus. But the design decisions that are made, if we decide to bolt the connections versus welding the connections, that is going to force a different process design. Okay. And so we call that the product process concurrent engineering aspect or concurrent design. And a lot of the DFMA work is focused in that area about the relationship between the product and process. But there's a third part of all this, which we call the relationship between capacity, inventory, and variability. Once you understand the five levers, you can understand why people are doing what they're doing. Okay, and I'll give you a for instance. The productization and standardization of product design, and we're not saying you shouldn't do that, but what you're attempting to do when you do do that is you're trying to mitigate or minimize variability. Right. And so the more scenarios you have in how you design and what you design creates more variability and there's relationships between variability, inventory and capacity. All right. Now, a lot of people say, I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't know why I need this. I'm in construction. What does this have to do with construction? Well, a large number of the people on the phone today or on the, uh, the webinar today are moving far beyond designing and assembly things on site, right? They're moving into what we're calling modern construction or industrialized construction as a, se seg as a segment. So it is critical and it is understood. And this is what they think about in manufacturing, right? They think about the relationship between capacity utilization and cycle time. They know the higher the utilization, the longer things take. So if you go into a factory, as we did when, when Gary and I had the opportunity to, to visit Ford, they're not focused on high utilization. They're focused on throughput. So they want an F-150 to come off the line every minute or a tack time of every minute, one truck. Okay, so their focus is on tack time and throughput, and they achieve that by managing their work in process, not in progress, in process. They know at some point that they can jam, the more they jam in there in the way of whip, they're not gonna get any return. As a matter of fact, what might happen is they might open so many boxes that it takes longer than it could, all right? And so we believe that it's important to begin to well, not even to begin to fully understand these concepts and these three simple curves. But I know most of you are saying, what is this guy talking about? And why is he talking about this? If you truly want to move into modern production, if you truly want to industrialize construction and modernize construction, you need to understand these relationships. Driving workers to work harder and produce more might make your project take longer. Starting more things might make your project take longer, right? These are mathematical equations that are understood in manufacturing that we're now introducing to the construction industry 
And we understand, and we hear it all the time, we don't know why you're talking about this. This is not what we have to do. And a lot of times we take that with, well, you're just not there yet, okay? Now, another thing that we try to get people to understand is there's no free moves on the board. You can't tinker with the capacity utilization and not have some kind of relationship with the inventory. You can't redesign the process, right? Without some implications to increasing or reducing variability, playing around with the inventory and think again, the working process. So these things are interconnected and because of that, and James is going to talk about this later, you have to look at this from a sequential nature, okay? All right. The other thing that's going on there to bring this back to the autonomous and the, and the, and the digital part is there is no doubt, as we said, that within the production element of this, things are becoming more autonomous and more robotic, all right? And that's a good thing. That, in turn, is producing a significant amount of data that is being managed through a variety of data centers, networks, telecommunications, capabilities and technologies, and so on and so forth. As that data is being produced, we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to go do with it, right? If you have real-time production data flowing up back and forth, why would you be messing around the critical path schedule? I've never been in a high-volume manufacturing plant where they use a critical path schedule. Right? They don't use earned value in semiconductor production, trust me. Right? And so what we need to do is we need to shift our mindset and get more clear on what it is that we uh, need as our foundation, if you will, to ensure that we build a strong house for modern construction. All right. So with that, let's go see what's happening out there and let's have a great day. Thank you very much.